Welcome to the Rangers Rabble podcast. This is inside the opposition for the Malmo versus Rangers Champions League qualifier. I am joined by Malmo fan John Taylor. John, how's it going? Great, thanks. Um, really appreciate you joining us. Your role here is to give us insight into Malmo that we maybe don't already have from a fan's perspective. And also, fingers crossed, not to strike too much fear into our hearts um, ahead of Tuesday night's qualifier in Malmo. Uh, I don't think we can strike too much fear. You guys are pretty full of yourselves right now after the <laughs> famous 55. Although I know Celtic will say it's just one, but <laughs> let's not get political. But I know it should be a good game. And uh, obviously we've got history. We've got history with both uh, Glasgow teams, which is statistically has been good for us. But we're looking forward to it and it should be, uh, should be a good fight. should be a good game. Firstly, people will be hearing your accent and know it's not a traditional <laughs> accent from Malmo. So you you were born in Sheffield and moved over to Malmo a couple of decades ago? Yeah, I'm a Sheffield born and bred, Wednesday fan originally. Um, moved here in 1991, got kids, got a grandchild, good career. Uh, so I'm pretty happy over here. It's, uh, it's nice. It's nice in Sweden. Very nice. Obviously, earlier on, late 80s, um, Nottingham Forest played Malmo in the European Cup final. What was it that drew Malmo to you? when you moved to Sweden, were they just, were they the side locally to where you were staying? Yeah, I, I mean, I moved here because of a relationship with somebody from Malmö, but, uh, you know, I'm a strong believer in that you should support your local team. Uh, I grew up in Sheffield, I supported Wednesday. If, if I travel around, I'll always go and look at the local team because, you know, you want to enjoy the local culture. And I moved to Malmö and uh, I went to the matches straight away uh, with other people who were studying Swedish, actually French guys, Israeli guys, guys from Algeria. And we all went to the match. Uh, we all played footy in the local league, Division 6. I was a reasonably good goalkeeper. <laughs> Although my ex-teammates will dispute that. And um, I just became a part of the Malmö football community. The, more, the, uh, the, the, um, the society is just really good, really nice. Yeah, over, over the last decade, we've become very familiar with seeing Malmö's name in the Europa League uh, Champions League group stage a couple of years ago. Um, over that time, there was ups and downs. Um, got to Champions League group stages, then a couple of early round knockouts from uh, what I would say is lower teams. But um, Danish striker John Dal Thomason is now your, your head coach, won the title last year. What has he changed in taking Malmo forward? And what type of style of play are we expecting to see on Tuesday night that we might not have already grasped on the, the two Helsinki games that we watched? Yeah, uh, to understand what John Dal Thomason has done, you have to under understand what was going on before when we had Oga Harreider, the Norwegian ex Manchester City player, and also the ex Man City player, uh, Uwe Rosloch, who played a uh, 3 5 2. Uh, very, very disciplined. No young players got to play hardly. He just played the established players. What John Dal Thomason has done is let the young players into the team. He's released a lot of the very, very good elder players, which has been a bit controversial in some cases. Uh, obviously, our most iconic player ever, Marcus Rustenberg, has uh, retired as well. And that's a massive hole to fill for anybody. So what John Dal Thomason speaks about is uh, playing principles. He says the principles of the game that it might look like we're playing a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-4-2 or a 3-5-2. But I think he's, 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 he's worked a lot in Holland and he's, I think it's a bit more like the total football kind of thing. Uh, there's a lot of passing. Uh, he doesn't like players dribbling with the ball. Although uh, we have one player who's very interesting, a guy called uh, Bimancevic, uh, a left winger, who's, uh, he, he's allowed to dribble. And we all want him to dribble very much. Um, he's, he's one of the best players we've seen for a long time, actually. So we play a passing game. Uh, we will vary it and play the long ball every now and again, up to Cholak, uh, the centre forward, who's scored a, a lot of goals this year already for us. Um, so we, we play passing game out of defence um, and we won't be, uh, and we play this typical kind of European game, we won't be rushed, we'll pass the ball around at the back if we're leading, uh, we'll be very, very patient and uh, we'll, we'll obviously try and stick the ball in the back of the net, which is what foot is all about, isn't it? So yeah, you've mentioned two, two of the three players I wanted to ask about, so the three players I did want to talk about was Christensen, Cholac and Brumanovic, as you've said. He never started the Helsinki game, the latter. What was the, the purpose for him being on the bench? I know he came on and scored what ended up being a decisive goal. Yeah. Uh, the reason is that is that John Dahl will play conservatively uh, with Søren Rex, the Danish international, who's 34 years old. Might have lost half a yard of pace over the last season, but he's a very, very consistent player, very disciplined in defence. 
and he can also do good stuff in attack. So basically, John Dal Thomason there is using Birmanchevic as a super sub uh, and in a massive injection of pace around 65, 70 minutes when hopefully their right back is tired and it worked within three minutes. So, you know, maybe he's got a plan. Maybe he's no, maybe he knows what he's doing, John Dahl. So for as much as Bermanchevich is the, probably the most exciting, the dribbler on the ball, would Rangers fans be happy to see him on the bench on Tuesday night then? I, I think it's 50-50 because if he starts, he's going to cause havoc from the beginning anyway. But I would imagine we'll be conservative and play Sir and Rex on the left and then bring him on on the second half for the injection of pace. He, he's going to do stuff anyway. Uh, so we, we've got a lot of reasonable cards in, in our hand, we think. And um, I, th I think we can basically stick anybody on and be happy. Yeah, we'd done a pretty detailed analysis when we knew it was Malmo or, or Helsinki. Um, and we did get a few comments on our YouTube channel that we maybe had been a bit um, disrespectful to Malmo. So what is the, the overall feeling within the Malmo fans as your chances for this game? Yeah, who'd been disrespectful towards Malmo? Hey, us and our analysis of the, the podcast. Yeah, well, but you're Glasgow Rangers, you're going to be disrespectful, <laughs> yeah? You mean you've won a European Cup, yeah, in the 70s? Uh, you know, you're one of the greatest teams in the world, together with Celtic and Liverpool and Man United. You know, I have respect uh, for that kind of thing. I'm very old school there, I got it from my dad. Um, no, I mean, we're, we're, some of our friends, Samuel Biro on, on Twitter has been giving you guys uh, grief as well. It's, <laughs> so we, we like to heat up the atmosphere as well. But it's all good banter. Uh, we're all mates, we're all football supporters. So I don't think there's disrespect. Um, I think we think we've got a good chance to take this game. I think, uh, like us, you, you guys are in transition as well. Um, you know, there's a little bit of talk about that Steven Gerrard might be going. Everton, I've heard mentioned. You know, it's so, and also you've just won the league now for the first time in a long time. You might be getting a bit ahead of yourself. I'm looking at your team. Yeah, there's a lot of players who played for Barnsley and Canada and Bristol City. You know, that's pretty much like our team as well. You know, we're not the top level at the moment and neither are you guys the top level. You want to be and you have been, but you ain't there right now. So uh, I'm looking at this as a 50-50 game. And I think most of us are as well. Yeah, and if that to be the case, because both of us have made the Europa League last 32 in the last two seasons, where is it that you see, if, if any, weaknesses that you've seen in Rangers or where you think the game can be won for Malmo? And do you think this first leg on Tuesday is the one where you really need to come out? I know that's not how it went in 2011. Um, Rangers managed to hang on for a draw, but blew it in the, the Ibrox leg. So where yeah. do you see this game being won or lost and how important is this home tie? I think it's going to go down to the last 10 minutes in the second leg. Uh, you, you guys have got some very, very good attacking players. Um, is Morelos going to be playing? Um, we, don't Morelos, be Morelos. We, don't, we don't believe so. So he's just, he completes his quarantine on Wednesday, but he's still not had any preseason training okay. after Copa America. So highly unlikely. Roof okay, suspended, well. Kamara suspended. So it's looking like a Fashion Sakala or Cedric Eaton that are going to be leading the line. Roof, that's good. That's good for us. That Roof's, uh, I, I like Roof. He used yeah. to play for Leeds, didn't he? I, I like him a lot. He's a good player. Um, I think what will happen is that obviously with a home team, uh, we don't have the big crowd. I think they're allowing five thousand people. That's all. I got a ticket. Uh, it took me thirty attempts on our <laughs> pathetic uh, web page, which is chaos. Uh, you know, we're a fan-based club. We're a fan-owned club as well. We have the fifty-one yeah. percent rule, so it was something which we're very proud of. Uh, but we're, we're all going to be singing all match and it should be a good atmosphere. You can ask the Celtic fans about that one. Um, we'll, we'll go out hard in the first 10 minutes, but we won't be stupid. We won't, we won't just go all in for the first 10 minutes, but obviously we're going to start fast. That's the key thing at home, isn't it? Start fast and try and shock the opponent. But we know you're a good team, so there's, there's going to be a conservative aspect in that. We're not going to be giving anything stupid away. And we just see how the game develops. I'm sure John Dahl has uh, worked out that your, your playing system as well. He's reasonably experienced. Not as, you know, he's also been in the Champion League final, uh, just like Steven Gerrard. Um, but it's it's going to be interesting, and we just don't know. You know, we don't get much Scottish television over here. I mean, you ran away with the league last year, uh, but we just don't know how you guys play really. How how have Malmo been playing? And I, I, um, I know he's a top of the league. I know your Gardens have a game in hand. Um, if they win that, they go top. How have you actually been playing? And what is the the, the form? And quotations actually been like just now? Uh, we've been playing like something you would probably say is like a four. Uh, it's very difficult. We play with Cholak uh, up front on his own. 
but all the midfield players are, are very fast to get up there with him. Uh, we have one interesting player called Adi Nalic, uh, Adi Nalic uh, who you guys again end up hating because he's one of these typical Balkan players, a very, very naggy, obstreperous, awkward a moaner, but we, we all love him, even though he makes a lot of bad choices. He sticks the ball on the back of the net. You know, we've, I can see him getting one of your guys sent off in effect. That might be funny. Um, uh, it, it's just going to be interesting to say I have no idea what the plan is, uh, but we've been playing well. Uh, we had a difficult away game um, last week and we, we just played basically the uh, very simple and we beat them 2-0 in the second half. Uh, we had a couple of poor defeats against Jürgen Gordon from Stockholm on uh, the plastic plastic turf and against Norshirping as well who are a good old club but they also play in plastic and that's the big scandal in Swedish football actually the teams play on AstroTurf we hate that and I know a lot of their fans do as well but you're, you're playing on grass we're playing on grass it's just going to be a, a, a full action game it's going to be really really good you guys are going to love this yeah don't don't worry over in Scotland we're very familiar with the contra, contra, controversy sorry around uh, the plastic pitches and the 4G um I've looked at a couple of the Champions League qualifiers in previous seasons that you failed to get past uh, Molvidal of Hungary and Varda Skopje of Macedonia. What went wrong in those games? I know it wasn't John Dal Thomason's um, teams, but what went wrong in those rounds that perhaps need to be corrected going forward? Um, I think that has been corrected. That was a shocking state of affairs. Losing to Varda was really, really bad. Um, um, they had, yeah, they had a couple of Brazilian guys and they moved the match to another stadium and they did all the usual stuff they do in Eastern Europe, you know. Um, I, I think those problems have, we've taken care of. Uh, there were some structural problems in the management. Those trainers aren't with us anymore. Those coaches aren't with us anymore. The team's different. We've got a lot of experience on the team uh, in Europe. Uh, some of the guys on the team will have played against Celtic in Celtic Park. I don't think there's anybody left who played against you guys. Um, it could be one or two players, maybe. Um, so, so those those problems when we lost early on, I think we've got over that. We've we've played some big clubs in in the last few years. You know, we've played Madrid, got stuffed. Obviously, we played Paris Saint Germain, got stuffed. Obviously, did well against Atletico Madrid. Um, could have taken some points against Juventus, maybe. And then, you know, we, we, we're sweeping away these small teams like we did with Helsinki last week as well. And they're all the tricky games. It's the first three games like this one now against you guys. They're the tricky games, uh, playing against teams basically at the same level. Uh, so I, th I think we've taken care of those structural problems we had. Uh, I think that's behind us now. <clears throat> and the final thing I really want to know is if this is a game that Rangers perhaps take the lead in the away leg, how well are Malmo structured to overturn falling a goal behind. We've seen a lot of teams over in Scotland that we kind of know if, if we get that lead, that really plays into our hands. I know the away goal rule doesn't exist anymore, but there is still a bit of an emphasis if Rangers were to take a lead that Malmo would maybe have to try and get something back in, especially the way our Ibrox form has been um, in the last couple of years under Gerard at home. How well is he able to adjust? I know you've said a couple of times that he does play the one up front and that's how we go to um, I think we do have a lot of variation available in our team and our squad. It, it can take off Rex, for example, and put on Bimancevic. We have Ewing Abergat as well, who's one of our main players. And the third player, obviously, our key player is Anders Christensen, the yeah. Dane, who's probably the best player in the Swedish league. And he, if he chooses to go forward or if John Dahl Thomason sees we're a goal behind and we need to push up, he will push up Anders Christensen to play in, a, to play in the hole. He'll play like as an inside forward behind Cholek. And... It, I mean, he always says, you know, the top corner is always free. And I think his last goal, he just st stuffed it up in the top corner as well, yeah. Uh, and Anders Christiansen is definitely the key player to watch in this game for us. He's uh, without doubt the best player we have. I'm glad you uh, so, said so that. If, yeah, we, we, we could easily go a goal down. That's not a problem, but I think we'll be patient. He'll change some things. We'll push up. You know the way it works. But at the same time, I'm just a footy supporter. What do I know? I'm glad you've said that about Anders Christensen because he was a player we highlighted as being the, the key player for Stephen Davis or Glenn Kamara to get their hands on and well, Glenn Kamara's going to miss us is just to be near him and on top of him. Does Anders Christensen on the flip side, I was looking at some of his stats defensively and duels, is that perhaps something that is maybe slightly weaker in this game that he is better being the player going forward and joining attack and that's why you need the two sitters behind him as such? 
Um, I would say Anders Christian is, is, is a good defender. He's a very, very good defensive player. But we lose a lot of offense. We, sorry, we lose a lot of uh, attacking, um, attacking stuff if we if we put him in the in the defensive role. Yeah. So yeah, we'll probably play two holding midfield players behind Anders Christensen. Um, he's wasted playing as a defensive midfield player. That's yeah. not his strong point. His, his strong point is an end to end player, especially on the counter attack. And if he gets the chance for a shot outside the area, there's a good chance it's flying in the top the top corner. He's got a very, very good right foot. Um, if he gets a chance alone in the box, he's usually very calm. He'll just slot it in the in the corner. Uh, very good pass of the ball. A lot of our players use the outside of their foot this year, which is always nice to see on a football player. Um, yeah, so Christensen is, is definitely our, our ace in the pack. John, so fingers crossed, I am wishing Malmo... Um, good luck from a Rangers point of view in the rest of the Europa League campaign, hopefully for us. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much for coming on to the Rangers Rabble and giving us um, insight into Malmo that I think the fans will really enjoy hearing. Thank you very much. Let's have a good game this week, okay?